Well, I'm going to uh, begin just by asking about how sort of surreal it must be to watch a version of yourself on, on the cinema screen, someone playing you. Um, I, I'm sure when people say it's surreal, I always say that's not an answer because surreal doesn't explain anything to anybody. It's like a way, of, and I try to, I want to say exactly how it feels and I think it feels really exciting. I think it feels um, like I've been incredibly fortunate that this should happen and it's it, it's great fun to see it and to see Chris O'Dowd do it and to have been able to get to know Chris over the last um, two years but especially over the last few months and to find him such an incredibly charming, generous guy with his time, incredibly funny, that's just been a lot of fun and ultimately you want to have as much fun you know doing something like this which it did involve kind of trying times but overall it, it it's it hasn't it it's been real and it's been wonderful and it's been great I mean I had 24 guests at the premiere on Saturday night many of them family members all my kids are seeing it now and they're all giving me their reactions and it's just great fun. So how good a job do you think he does of capturing your, your sensibilities or is it quite difficult for you to tell? No, um, what I wanted to see in Chris's performance was a guy who seemed to me like a journalist who had a bee in his bonnet and um, and Chris definitely seems like that to me. The, 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 the point in the, in the film where he is kind of ranting, um, you, know, I, I, you know, at the table with the other journalists where uh, John Wilcoxon says, you know, why are you obsessed about this? And and Chris O'Dowd says, why are you not obsessed about this? Well, that's how I was. I was in, I was at that restaurant table. I was saying very similar things. And my kids say that at the point where, where I say, the man is a cheat. But Chris O'Dowd says, the man is a cheat. My kids say, Dad, we heard you say that about <laughs> 20 times. And Chris O'Dowd sounded just like you. So, so why didn't you give up in the face of overwhelming opposition? Uh, because I knew that for all the criticism I was getting, the one thing I had on my side was that I was telling the truth and that there was no doubt in my mind about that. And once people started putting their necks on the line to help me, my sources, people like Betsy Andreo, M. O'Reilly, Stephen Swart, Greg and Cathy Lamond, once people like that were giving a lot to me, I then had no option but to see it through to the end because if I'd, in a way, given up, which I was never going to do, I would have been letting them down and I didn't have that right. So how many in the peloton supported you? In the peloton? I don't know. Uh, I was going to say none, but that would be unfair and I'm sure there were riders who were riding clean, riders who were riding clean who were quite, who were happy. Um, um, to support me. People like Christophe Basson, the young French writer that I championed in 99, he would have thought, great that some journalists are trying to tell the truth here. And I, I can recall I spoke to a documentarian called Alex Gibney who made that the documentary, yes. The Armstrong Lie, and he said he felt personally let down by Lance Armstrong, as though he had been duped himself. I was wondering if that was a sentiment you shared. Did you feel quite personally affected by this? Because no. you'd met him. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And I just think... I'd love Alex to be sitting right there and to say that to me because I did a two-hour interview for Alex's documentary and I laid out the case against Armstrong. And this was in 2009 as Alex was setting out on the road before Alex knew the truth. And I would have told Alex, if you looked at the two-hour interview I gave to your guys for your documentary, you would have known the truth. I wasn't making up all that stuff. The case was there. Alex was enjoying his ride with Lance. He was a friend of Lance's. He was kind of being sucked in. He was enjoying that celebrity connection. And I would say, Alex, you just neglected your, your journalistic self for a few months or for a year or so, whatever, and you got sucked in by it. You're a crazy man. But at the same time, I mean, can that not be put down to Lance's kind of manipulative yeah. persona? You know? Yeah, but it wasn't that Alex didn't have a counter view. It wasn't that Alex wasn't going out. Alex was trying to find the counter view, but when he found it, he didn't want to accept it. You know, it's like, it, it, it is human nature. But when it comes to journalists, you want them to be better than that. And I regard Alex as a great filmmaker. Some of the documentaries have been totally outstanding. But I would have said, how can you be sucked in by this guy, Alex? In 1999, it was perfectly obvious. Now we're telling you 10 years later and you're still not seeing it.
But what what do you make of the, the current state of cycling finally? I mean, is, is, do you think that it's still feeling the repercussions of, of this whole scandal? Oh, no question about that. Chris Froome felt the repercussions hugely uh, on this year's tour where he was being accused and um, seriously, like, uh, told he was a doper without anybody producing evidence. It, it, it becomes a bit like, you know, the crucible, uh, you know, Abigail's party. You know, we have a witch here, but where's the evidence she's a witch? We don't need evidence anymore, we just decide. And it was a bit like that with Chris Froome at the Tour de France this year. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It's been a pleasure to speak yeah. to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!